thank you for coming out on this brisk winter afternoon. And in many ways, it's probably a good thing that it's getting colder, but I know we're all shivering a little bit, especially in the shade. Uh, but this actually is a very special occasion for our city. And so I really appreciate everyone coming out and taking the time. And I know for many of us, this is something we wish would have happened a long time ago. And so I'm happy to be able to uh, make good on a campaign commitment that is critical for our city, our state, and even our country. And as we're gonna talk about today, our planet Earth and the important things that affect us all. So good afternoon. Uh, I want to welcome everyone to the Open Space Visitors Center. Uh, we have some Visitor Center staff here. Give us a quick wave. Saw them on the back. Beautiful facility. Thank you for what you do. Uh, this center, as folks know, is a great place here in Albuquerque to learn about the natural heritage of this area and gain a real appreciation for its beauty. Uh, and it's a great reminder of our city's unique character. And if you didn't see the cranes flying earlier, I mean, it's perfect. So uh, come back with your family. <laughs> I also want to thank a number of people who are here with us today. Um, and that includes, uh, and I'll, she'll be saying a few words later, but Camila Feebleman. Um, she's put together dozens of organizations which are part of the Albuquerque Climate Coalition and have really shown leadership on all of these issues. And so Camila, give us a wave. Uh, and Climate Coalition, wave. She's all part of the Climate Coalition. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I also want to list some of the names of other organizations that are here and work on these issues on a daily basis. We've got our UNM uh, Sustainability Department Director, Bruce. Bruce, give us a wave. Thank you, Bruce Milne. Um, and then uh, UNM Geography and Environmental Science. Studies. Still here. Studies. Thank you. Uh, Positive Energy Solar. I think I saw them. Oh Positive Energy. <laughs> nice. <Hey. laughs> uh, and Santa Fe Green Chamber of Commerce. Floating around, give us a wave, thank you. Jim Folkman, uh, Foundation for Building. It's back there, thank you, Jim. Uh, thank you for all coming today. We also have two city councilors who are joining us, uh, Councilor Davis and Councilor Borrego. I think they're floating back there, yeah. Let's give everyone a round of applause for coming. Okay, uh, when I made a decision to run for mayor of Albuquerque, uh, I did so with a belief that we need to own responsibility for our future going forward. And we're going to do this in the face of challenges, big and small, and head on. And I also ran noting one thing, which is that science matters. And we're going to honor that commitment here today. So we're here to talk about the challenge uh, that is not unique to our city. It's a global challenge that is going to require people all around the world to take part in assuring that we put the planet on a more sustainable path. And here in New Mexico, we've always known what it's like to live somewhere with warm temperatures, limited water resources, and climate patterns generally associated with a high desert. Unfortunately, these climate patterns are changing, and they have been for some time. And we're now experiencing rising temperatures, decrease in water availability, and some very concerning changes related to our weather patterns. And while these are very serious issues, we also know like none of our ski areas have snow. So I can't help but point out some things that might be connected to these larger issues. Uh, but these changes have resulted, of course, in extreme weather events all around the country and uh, the globe, including the hurricanes that made it devastating, took a devastating toll in Houston and Puerto Rico, and right here in our own backyard, as I mentioned, with respect to our lack of snowpack, hurting our outdoor recreation economy. And like many of our families, uh, we feel this in all sorts of different ways, whether it's recreation or whether it's the associated costs with climate change that we're gonna talk a little bit about. Now, lots of people may only think these changes uh, are in passing. They may not notice them because they often don't affect our daily lives. But the effects of climate change are of course compounding and have very real consequences in our economy, our natural environment, and our way of life in the American West. And so for example, we have hotter and drier weather that's creating tougher growing conditions for our state's farmers and ranchers that can translate to higher costs in the grocery store. We also have hotter weather that makes snowpack loss a huge challenge for our city, which now, of course, is dependent on snowpack water for our own drinking water. And then, of course, we see forest fires, which fortunately have not been an issue right now this winter, but we can only look to the Bosque 
and see what happened in previous years uh, due to drought. It also increases the toll on our infrastructure and makes even tougher budget constrained communities like ours uh, where we have to maintain roads and bridges. Um, it eventually hurts the bottom line for Albuquerque and therefore also is extended to the burden on our small businesses and families. So the absence of federal leadership on all of the issues that I just mentioned is really what is driving mayors to take a stand on their own all across our country. And I'm proud to be adding Albuquerque's list, Albuquerque's name to that list of mayors who are standing up for what is right when it comes to our environment and sustainability. So we are going to fill that vacuum of leadership by pledging to do what we can to reduce greenhouse emissions. So as I promised on the campaign trail uh, for mayor, uh, we are announcing that the city of Albuquerque will uphold the goals of the Paris Climate Agreement. And that's in accordance with the mayor's national climate action agenda. And these are all things online that folks can read about and go into all the details. I'm only gonna touch on a few here. But specifically, this means inventorying greenhouse gas emissions, setting achievable reduction targets, and putting a plan in place to meet those goals. So by taking these steps to address climate change, we will not only make things better for our families and businesses in the short term, we will begin to define a more sustainable future for Albuquerque to ensure that our city will continue to thrive over generations to come. Now, as the largest city in New Mexico, this obviously sets a wonderful precedent for the rest of our state and literally is an example of us leading the way and taking the opportunity to demonstrate leadership through the use of renewable energy and enhanced energy efficiency. Now, there's a lot of good things that our city is already doing, and I just want to check, do we have folks from Solid Waste or the Sunport here? I'm not sure if they made it. Actually, there's some things we're doing, but I uh, want to acknowledge their efforts that we've been doing with solar power at the Sunport, recycling at solid waste, uh, and also our facilities department has been doing a whole lot in terms of energy efficient lighting. And actually, I think he is here. Ken? Hand wave? Woo! There he is. Thank you, Ken. And he's been doing this for a long time, and we're going to actually reinvigorate a lot of the hard work that he's put in in the past. Um, but the reality, of course, is we have to do a whole lot more to reduce our carbon footprint. Uh, I also want to recognize the, F, the efforts that our water authority has done. And I think we have some folks here. Mark, thank you, Mark, for what you've done, especially recharging our aquifer. And uh, also, I think our environmental health department is here, which has done some great work on air quality. Thank you so much for that. So it's our aspiration to be good citizens of the world, and I believe that if we work together, we can actually achieve these goals. We owe it not only to future generations, but also to the current generation, as we see how devastating the effects of climate change are that are taking a toll on our communities. This is too important for us to ignore. And though I believe through collective action at the local level, we can make headway in addressing climate change, I also believe that it's gonna take all of us together, and that includes every city in New Mexico that I hope follows New Mexico's lead if they haven't already and joins us uh, signing on to the Paris Agreement. So uh, with that, I want to say thank you so much for coming today. We're going to uh, have some words from Camila and then we're actually going to sign the appropriate paperwork. So Camila, come on up. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Camilla Feibelman, and I'm the director of the Rio Grande chapter of the Sierra Club, which represents New Mexico and West Texas. But as the mayor says, I do have the, the honor of helping to facilitate our Albuquerque Area Climate Coalition, which includes the Sierra Club, 350.org, Environment New Mexico, New Mexico Interfaith Power and Light, New Energy Economy, Transition Albuquerque, Food and Water Watch, Citizens Climate Lobby, Organizing for America, Indivisible, Conservation Voters New Mexico and their Juntos program, and New Mexico Story Power. So if your group is represented in the coalition and you're not up here, come on up. I see a few people who are missing, Javi, Sanders, others. Um, 
you know, our group is a broad coalition of organizations that represent young people, Spanish-speaking communities, uh, um, clergy, and others. And I think that this issue has crystallized for us in the way that maybe m my own relationship with the mayor has. You know, we've known him as a state legislator, and we've known him as the auditor, but I've actually gotten to know him as a as another parent at the preschool that our kids go to. <laughs> and I think every day that we drop off our kids there or pick them up, we're reminded of why this issue is so important. And in many ways, the kids are leading us. There are two kids who are party to a children's trust lawsuit calling on New Mexico to make rules on uh, global warming uh, gases. So two of these guys who are leading the way are right here. So I think they deserve a round of applause. You know, for too long, the well-connected in New Mexico have acted to undermine important environmental protections that are important for our kids, our families, and our future. And I don't think that there's any small irony in the fact that yesterday was the last day of 96 days without precipitation in our area. Climate change isn't something that we can anticipate and fear. It's happening now. But fortunately, we've got some solutions. And that's one of the big reasons that we're here. We want to show that the economy and developing it and the environment all go together, that we have a chance to keep Albuquerque the beautiful place it is, protect its climate, protect its landscape, and at the same time make sure that our kids can find jobs here, that they can stay here in the long term, that there will be water for them, that there will be a future in this city and in this state that's so special to us. And so I think it's important to understand a little bit about the context of how we got here today. This idea that our president would have removed us from a global agreement to curb global climate chaos that every country in the globe is a signatory to except for Syria has to make us really question what's going on. But thanks to mayors like Mayor Keller all around the country, thanks to private industry, thanks to the efforts of citizens around this country, we may be able to meet the Paris Climate Agreement on our own. And that's something that's really special and really important as well. We're also looking at actions that we can take immediately here in Albuquerque. For example, re-upping our energy and building codes to the 2018 codes, which would put us back in a leadership position. We had some of the best building codes in the country until they were rolled back by the last administration. We also had a climate action plan that over 100 people had participated in creating, but it was never implemented, even though leaders like Sister Joan Brown met with the past administration to encourage them and work with them to implement it. So we're about eight years too late, but fortunately we've got a good start with Mayor Keller, and so as a coalition, I think we all want to express a big thanks for helping to protect Albuquerque, New Mexico, our climate, for our kids, our families, and our communities. Well, thank you guys each for keeping up this fight long enough so that I could get here. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Uh, and what we're going to do is um, there's a couple of letters that we need to sign to sort of make this real. Um, I won't go into them, but one of them is to the head of the chairman of climate mayors that happens to be the mayor of L.A., uh, Eric Garcetti. So um, if anyone is interested in actually taking a picture of the paperwork, you can. Uh, if not, I get it. Like, it's just a letter. But, um, <laughs> so, but uh, you know, we want to do it officially. So that's the first letter that I'm signing, signing here. And so that's with respect to the, uh, the mayor's climate. And I think, is it the only one? And that gets copied. OK, so that gets copied to the uh, Paris Accord signees and, and everything else. Um, so with that. Albuquerque is on board. Thank you so much.